Welcome to MacroCode. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. So today we are going to learn how we can actually use SP.NET Core Identity API endpoints to actually secure your web API. So to begin with, we are going to create a new project. Then I'll just create SP.NET Core Web API. We can do here API. So then I'll have my SP.NET Core Web API project template. This is actually a template for creating a RESTful web API using SP.NET Core controllers or minimal APIs. So I'll choose this one. Then next. Then I'll actually choose the folder where I want my project to be stored. So I'll just go to macro code. And then uh, to my folders there. Then I can actually give it a name. So I can say sample API uh, SP identity identity endpoints so i can say sp identity endpoints then i'll just uh, go to next then i'll choose dotnet 8 then authentication type i'll leave a uh, none then i can say use uh, controllers and enable open api support so when i click create it will actually create our api so there we go so our api has been created and you can actually even launch the API right now to see how it looks. So we have our weather forecast class, which it has some properties here. Then we have our controller with this weather forecast controller. So if we just launch this API, you realize, you realize that you are able to get the weather forecast data from this uncoded information. But we are going to link this to our database so that you are able to see how that works. So this is how the API looks, as you can see. These are sample API SP identity endpoints. And you can see we have the weather forecast, uh, get weather forecast. So if you try this and click execute, it will give you the data of the weather forecast. You can see the date, temperature. We have uh, the summary and all these data here. And you can as well download. So it will give you the JSON of the response. So. The first thing that I want us to do is uh, I want us to first install some NuGets. So we'll just click on the project here. Then I'll go to manage NuGet packages. Then I want us to install Entity Framework. So I'll do S. So I'll just search here Microsoft uh, Microsoft SPNet Core Identity dot Entity Framework. So this is the this is the NuGet package that I want us to install. So just click install, then it will be installed, accept. So that is one. So I want us also to install uh, identity UI. So I'll just do identity UI. Then I install that one. Then also what I want us to install is uh, Microsoft uh, Entity Framework Core. So just uh, Microsoft Entity Framework Core. Entity Framework Core. So just that. So install that one. And also we can install Microsoft Entity Framework Core.SQL server. So install that as well. There we go. So since we have those now, what I want us to do, create a folder on our project here called uh, a database. Just call it database. Then here we can add our application DB context, which will actually act as a connection to our database. So we'll call application DB context. So that's a class. Then this class of ours is going to inherit identity. So it will inherit identity DB context. So we'll do identity DB context. Then you can actually have identity. So you can say here identity, identity user. So if we do that, then we'll have our identity DB context. You can import using Microsoft.NET Core uh, identity framework. So we have our DB context. So the next thing is to have our constructor. So I'll just do CTO. Our constructor is there. Then here we can actually say db context options, db context options. 
So we are using that. Then you can actually have our application DB context. Then here we can do options. Then you can actually have our base options here. So you can say base options. So I want us to close that. We have this and that that has been closed. So we need our options here. So what is wrong? So we need our so we have our DB context option. Then we have our application DB context. Then we have here options. Then I can just so let me just do this. Then here. I can actually put in some items here. So we actually need that. So it will be base options. So the next thing that I want us to do now is I want us to register our, our application uh, DB context. So to do that, let's just go to program.cs class. So here. Then I want us to first things first. So I want us to define the connection. So we can actually create the database. So connect to our SQL server. And you can actually connect this locally or even you can actually have it as a, a sample, as a sample, or even to via an API. So you can say uh, sample API identity. Sorry, sample API identity identity sample api identity that's our database so this is our database name so if we go to our application db context we we can actually go to app settings sorry so i want us to add something on our app setting and this is the connection to the database so if i zoom this so if i zoom that here we can actually add our connection string so you can do connection string and our connection string now will be this way. Then you can have default connection. You can see that is now the uh, uh, relevance of having a copilot. So I'm using copilot, that's why you see my values are being pre-populated. So if you go to our, you can actually copy our database, our server name. And uh, if you copy the server name, you can put in the IP address here and the port or actually the, just the server name. So for local, I'm using my server name, but you can actually point in via the IP address and the port. Then the database, you can use the database that we just created. And this is the name of the database called sample SP identity. So if we just go there and I can place this one here and just paste it. Then you have the trust connection trust. So then we can actually add another one called trust server certificate, trust server certificate. Then you can just add this to true. Then here, if we do that, then we'll have our connection already set. So the next thing that I want us to do now is I want us to register this on our program.cs. So what we need to do on our program.cs, I want us to come here and we can have our connection string. So you can say connection string. So you can see my, so it's giving me the options. So I have the connection string, then you have the default connection. But you can also have, uh, you can actually uh, define if this is null, what it can do. So if I just if I just minimize this and I do this, it will actually can do throw. So you can say new invalid. So you can say invalid, invalid, invalid operation exception. And we can give it an error. You can see connection string is not found. So that is it. Then once we have our connection string, so this one will give us our connection string. You can see that's now the essence of having the uh, copilot. It's actually adding for us and we can actually import this. So you can see, you can import that and you're having our SQL server here. 
So these uh, options here, we can just say use SQL Server and we can also import Entity Framework Core. And that, that's our code, so our code has been defined. So what I want us to do now is uh, we can actually now go back to, you see we have our authorization here. So you can even add the builder services. So here we can say builder dot services. So you can see we are able to add this. So you should actually add SPNet identity. You import it. Then you have also identity role. Then you have our application ADB context. So since you have that, we can also have our builder dot services. Then authentication scheme, you can also add. So let's just add the builder dot services. Then you can say dot uh, add authorization. So you can add authorization and you can actually even add with the, if, in case you add, you want the policy, you can also define that. But for now, we don't need that. I'll just uh, do that. So, I want us now to add something else. I want us to add now the endpoints. So you can do here. So let me just, uh, you can see what is actually proposing for us to add. So this is actually for uh, tokens. So I can actually do builder, builder dot services dot uh, add identity. You can see identity endpoints. And you can see if I do that, I can actually add my identity user. So here I'll just say identity, identity, identity user, where is my user, identity user. And I, if I do that, then I can have my, I can do here options. So then I can do options equals to, then I can actually now add. So you can see some of the items that we have been, we are, it is actually suggesting for us to add. So this is now copilot in action. So if you want to see how this works, then you can actually, we can actually do a video on our next episode, how you can actually leverage this. So I'll just uh, press enter. Then I can say here options. So I'll just do options. Then dot, I can do now, I want now to check on the password. So I can say dot password. I can actually limit the passwords. It, it, it will also suggest. So you can actually check the password they require a digit. If you need a digit in your password, you can say true. You can also check that you need a password not less than six. You can also see it require lowercase. You can also say it, it, it has to have a, an uppercase. It has to re require an alpha alphanumeric. And you can say you must actually sign in. You, you can actually confirm your email address. You can do that. And uh, you can also say options, options. So you can do options. Then you can say user. So you can say user require unique email address. For each of the user, you should actually require a unique email address. You can see you require phone number, but you don't need that. So these are some of the items that you can actually add in our endpoints for actually signing in and even uh, registration. So since we have this, we can actually do here. Now you can say, uh, you can actually add the default UI. So you can say add default UI then our default token our providers. So the next thing is uh, to ensure that we have our authorization here. Then we, we now need to add something down here called, so you can say app dot uh, map identity. So here you can say map identity API. Then you can actually pass the uh, user. So you can say identity user. And if I do that, then we'll be having our endpoints. So that is the only thing that you need to do. So if you have all this uh, setup, you can actually uh, do, uh, 
actually see your endpoints. But now I want us to do something. Remember we had uh, connected our application to the database and this is the database. So I want us to add migration. So come to tools, you get package manager console, then just add. So before even adding, yes, we can actually, instead of adding, my, let's add migration. So let's say add migration, uh, initial migration. So if we do that, so what's the issue here? So the reason as to why we are getting this error. So let's just come to man, man you get packager console. Then we need to have entity framework. Just do tools. So we have our tools here. So we need to, ins to add that. So you can add that particular NuGet. And you can also add, uh, let's also add the, do you need that? I think that's, that's cool. So go back to our console, then we can add our migration. So if you do that, then you can actually run migrations on our project. So there's one thing that uh, we can do. So you can see this is, is our migration file has been generated. We have the SPNet roles table, SPNet users, SPNet uh, roles claims all these tables will be created on our database. So the next thing to do is actually do update database. So we'll just uh, press enter and our database will be updated with the new command. So you can see it is actually generating, it is actually generating everything like this is a statement, a create table, a spinet users table. So if you go to our database now, we'll be having a table called uh, EF migration. So you can see, it has been created. We have the SPNet users and you also have SPNet roles. So that, these are some of the details that we have. Now, if we go back to, if we launch now our API, we should now have uh, the endpoints. So you can see the schema already exists, identity.application. So we need to, so I want us to change something. So we have our map identity API. So the next thing that I want us to do is uh, if you go back to our application, you realize that we had added this here. So I want us to remove this. So remove all this here. Then what we need to also do is uh, here, we need to add, so add identity framework stores. Then you can actually say here, application db context that's okay then you have our identity user we have everything set then here we can actually add our we have our authentication then here you can actually say you can use uh, authorization and they can actually use authentication so the, the another thing that you need to know is uh, authentication comes before authorization so then we have our identity user. So this is how our program.cs class looks like. So if you want to see, that's how it looks like. So the next thing is we just, if we relaunch now the app, we should now be able to see our endpoints. There we go. So you can see now the endpoints for our SP net identity. So you can see register, login, refresh, confirm, resend email, forget password, reset password, manage to factor authentication info and all those. So assuming we want to register, so we can actually uh, try. So if we just do here, macro code. So at, so you can say at gmail.com and then you can have the password admin macro 2070. So if we do that, and uh, execute, you realize that we are getting an error. So you remember the validations that we had done. Password must have at least one numeric character. So you can say here, you can add an at. So if we execute, then you realize that our data has been uh, successfully submitted. So if you go to the database and go to your SpinNet users, are we expecting a user? You see, we have a user macro code, and these are the details. We have even the password, 
and everything has been inserted. So you can see these are the details that has been done. So we can even try to add another one. We can say test. Then if we execute, so you can see our user has been registered. So this is a simple way of actually creating the endpoints. You can see here, we have our new user. So we've actually registered uh, our user with those uh, credentials and you can actually log in. You can refresh the token. You can confirm the email using the user ID. You can also forget the password and you can reset the password. So these are some of the endpoints that you can actually uh, reuse for SP.NET Core identity. So that is it for today. In case you like this video, comment down below and see you in our next episode. Bye. Thank you.